Hello and welcome back guys, you are gaming with me, Brothgar, and today I've got another product review for you. Today I'm going to be looking at the Alula Mechanical Gaming Keyboard here with 87 keys. It is considered a mechanical professional gaming keyboard. The SI2012 keyboard here is an 87 key setup, so it doesn't have a number pad on the side here, but besides that, it's a full featured keyboard. And it has blue mechanical keys, baby. Blue mechanical keys. They're advertising this bad boy as a professional mechanical keyboard. So let's go ahead and take a look at the back of the box here, and then we'll get into some of the other topics, such as build quality, how it actually feels, and a couple of the mods I've made to the keyboard to make it even better. Alrighty guys, so let's take a look here at the back of the box and see what all we're getting with this keyboard and see how it all lines up to some real life tests. So right off at the beginning here, it says concise design, one integrated metal panel, stainless, scratch resistant. I will say this, it is scratch resistant. I wasn't able to scratch it. Maybe if I use something like a key, I'd be able to do that, but it's not gonna happen with my fingernail right there. It is a metallic front to it, and the Alula sign right there is really nice. Depending on where you look at it, it kind of shines a little bit more than that. But all in all, the design of it, it looks really good. The metallic front on it is very nice, and it adds a bit of weight and heft to the keyboard. We'll get into that in a little bit later here. Sensitive key response with excellent hand feeling over 60 million times typing life, so apparently you can press a lot of keys a lot of times, but how are you really even going to measure that? It hasn't conked out on me in the last two weeks, so I can't really tell you the durability of the keys. Multi-color backlight looks great. Okay, now here's the first problem. Right here on the back of the box, it says backlighting. Now, this keyboard does not have any backlighting at all. None. Not at all. The only color that you're going to get is if you press a function key and then press F8, you'll see that a little LED right here has lit up red. Now, what that has done is it's turned it into gaming mode, which basically means you can press the Windows key and nothing's going to happen. So if I turn that off and then do that and then press, let's say the caps lock, that LED will turn blue. That's the only amount of lighting that you get on this keyboard. They do, however, sell one of these keyboards with backlighting, so they might just be using the exact same box for both keyboards there. So it does have different RBG, different colors in the background right there. This is a different keyboard. It does cost more at $55, $60, as opposed to the one that we're looking at right here, which is $37 on Amazon. So and that's the first warning right there that we see off the back of the box that does not line up with the actual keyboard we have in front of us. All right, combine the FN key to create some shortcut function keys. Yes, you do have an FN key and you can do stuff like mute, Windows, fast forward, stop, the standard stuff that you'd get on just about any keyboard out there. Alrighty, so pretty much the normal stuff thus far, but this is a big point right here in the product description on the back of the box. It says N key rollover, and it also says anti-static next to it, but N key rollover is a big deal because if you have N key rollover, that means you can press all the keys on your keyboard at the exact same time and it will register on your computer. However, if we look here on the website for the Amazon store, it says anti-ghosting with 26 key rollover on USB. I have it plugged in through USB right now. Let's go ahead and do a test on Microsoft's Applied Science. So if I press a bunch of keys, I'll show it to you right here. You can see they're showing up on that keyboard right there. If I press a lot of keys at the same time, what you're getting is not N key rollover. Matter of fact, it's not even 26 key rollover. It seems to be freezing up after you press a couple of keys. Don't get me wrong, you can press all kinds of keys you want all day long, and you can get a pretty good combination. The most keys I've been able to activate at the exact same time is 11. So, big warning right there, it is not 26 key rollover, nor it is definitely not N key rollover. Now, if I compare this to a, another keyboard that does claim 26 key rollover, which is the Logitech G710, which is my keyboard that I purchased for myself, it is twice to three times as much as the uh, Alula keyboard here though, but if I press a bunch of keys on this thing right here, I just smash it down. Look at that guys, it's lighting up like a Christmas tree right there. You can't do that on the Alula keyboard, but they both claim the same thing right there. So, as per the back of the box, guess what? It's not accurate guys. So I gotta knock you on that one. Now, does this actually really matter that much? You know what, so what? Maybe they didn't put the right stuff on the back of the box, nor did they put it correctly on the Amazon Prime Store, but does it really actually matter? Well, WASD all works together, so if I press those and I start pressing all these other keys that are on my keyboard, a lot of them are being picked up. Although, if I press L, 
there are a few exceptions. Let's say I'm doing, I'm going forward, W, A, I hit control to go down, and for some odd reason, I'm also pressing shift. So that's a pretty, this has actually happened. I've, I've been in Battlefield and this has happened, and I go to press reload, or F, or E. That seems to work pretty good. If I press V though, let's say I got voice comms, I'm not able to press V right there, or C. Not that this would necessarily happen, to you that often it'd be very very rare but i'm just saying right there it is claiming something that you cannot do so to sum up that point unfortunately they're advertising something that their product does not contain 26 key rollover i can't get anything close to that nor can i get close to anything that is on the back of the box which is n key rollover so unfortunately they're lying to you and i think that's a big no-no and it really is unfortunately a big negative in kind of my review of this product you know you should be able to do what they advertise that you can do with it. Realistically though, in games, I've not had any problems doing whatever key combinations I needed to do in order to play the game. I mean, most of the time you're really only pressing a few keys at the same time, maybe four, five at the most, which seems to be happening quite fine on this keyboard, but uh, it's still annoying that they're advertising something that they can't do. All right, so back to the back of the box here, moving down to the specifications. We'll skip the size because you know how big it is. The keyboard weight is 0.9 kilograms, which is two pounds right here. By comparison, the Logitech G710 feels like it's nearly four or five pounds, quite a bit heavier. All in all though, it feels quite heavy and it feels quite robust. It seems like it's got good build quality to it. The nice metal front to it also means I can't really twist the product at all. It's very stiff. You could hit somebody with this and do some serious damage. It's good. It's got, seems like it has really good build quality and two pounds is a nice weight, but it's not too much to kind of carry around with you if you needed to. Moving on, interface is USB right there. That makes sense, 87 keys, and then the key root is four millimeters. Now, if you look at the back of the box here and we move over here to the right side of the box, what you'll see is under the blue switch right here, even though most of it is in Chinese, it says the key root is 2.4 millimeters with a strength of 60 grams. However, over here, it says the key root is four millimeters. Now that's kind of interesting to me. So because there was some discrepancy on the back of the box, I decided to go ahead and do my own measurements. What I came up here with my calipers as measured from one key to the next key is 3.55 millimeters is the total travel of the key from top to bottom. So when you press this, it travels a total of 3.5 millimeters. They advertise that it activates at 1.9 millimeters and I measured right around two millimeters. So 1.9 is probably accurate right there. So that's nice that that is consistent right there. Um, but in use, as far as the actual key goes, you do activate quite high. And then there is a fair amount of float between where you activate and the base of the key right there, which is nice, especially when it comes for typing. You really feel like you're getting nice key presses and whatnot. Now, when you actually go to press uh, buttons on the key, you do have that initial click. You can kind of hear it right there. And then there's this other click. If you're really pressing a key hard, which is a little bit louder, and that's that louder noise. What that louder noise is, is that key is bottoming out on the bottom of the keyboard or the bottom of the switch right there, giving you a very hard, abrupt stop right there. So what I did is I actually ended up getting some rubber grommets. So this is one of the first mods right here. These little, uh, maybe not rubber grommets, little rubber O-ring things that go onto the key. I ended up getting these guys right here. This is a 50 a durometer sort of thing. You can see it's linked right there and these are pretty stiff. So I ended up taking these and putting three of them onto the back of the key and that did two things for me. One, when I press a key and I press it down firmly, you don't get that knock sound that you get from the key bottoming out. So as far as noise wise, that drops the noise down quite a bit. However, what you also do when you add that same sort of modification to the key is you reduce the amount of key travel that you have. So it stops abruptly after you, the activation point. So what happens here when I modified this keyboard is I took 3.5 millimeters was the initial reading. And then after adding three of those O-rings to the key, I reduced that to 2.8 millimeters right there. And that's when it actually stopped. So if you think about that, it's it activates right around 1.9 and then travels 0.9 millimeters millimeters to the point where it actually stops right there. And for me, that makes it feel like this keyboard actually responds and acts quite a bit faster. I would say it made the keyboard from being really quite good to being awesome 
because you can really move faster. One of the th complaints I had with the keys is that I couldn't double tap very quick with the blue switches as opposed to brown switches, which is what I have on my G710 right here. So these brown switches are a little bit different as far as the actual switch size because they don't have that clicky sound, but they still do have that sort of tactile feedback. With, it's kind of a compromise. You can double tap these keys quite quickly. However, you can't necessarily double tap blue switches as fast as you can on browns until that modification. For me, this means this is probably my best gaming surface after that modification. So I highly recommend that you get some O-rings, slap it onto the bottom of these keys if you're gonna end up with these keys. Now talking about the actual keys, these keys are a little bit different than some of the other keys I've seen on keyboards. The reason is because when you pop one of these bad boys off, they're quite a bit more square than let's say some of these other keys that you would have, for example, on the G710. See how this key has a lot more taper to it when you kind of look at it? Now compare that to this other key that comes off the Alula keyboard right here. And what you end up with is these walls are actually a fair bit more, shall we say, they're, they're steeper. So you end up with a steeper wall now, this, these are more tapered, this is steeper, it gives you a larger cap surface. That's what I was trying to get at right there. And therefore, that's a little bit of a different thing. I don't know, I figured I just noticed it so I'd mention it to you. It doesn't really make that big of a difference, but it does mean that your the gaps between keys feel smaller as opposed to something that has more taper on it. Alrighty, so I've covered a lot of stuff on this keyboard. Hopefully you guys are still with me. What I got here is two more things. One thing that you'll notice on this keyboard, which you may not have noticed right off the bat, is the enter key, or shall we say the return key, whatever one you wanna call it, is a little bit different. The backslash is right over here, which is uh, actually in a different location. So normally, this backslash is located right up here, and then the enter key is both of these keys. On this keyboard, it's vertical as opposed to horizontal. So that took a little bit of getting used to. It was a little weird. I'm not sure why they do that, but there's several other keyboards that are doing that same sort of thing. Anyhow, that's where it is. It's not a big deal, but it is different. On the back side here, you do have rubber pads, and these do a pretty good job of holding the keyboard in place. When you throw down the little adjusters to give it a little bit more angle to the keyboard, you do not have rubber pads on these angle fold-out pieces, which in my opinion should be a standard for all keyboards ever if they're going to have flyouts to raise up your keyboard, there should be rubber padding on it because what that means is you're only gonna grab just a little bit of the rubber padding up front. It means it's a little bit easier to push around on smooth surfaces. However, in practice, um, it, the keyboard doesn't move around on you in either orientation, at least in my opinion. It doesn't move, but it is noticeably different. Anyhow though, just to sum up this keyboard, Ultimately, I think it's a really great keyboard. I enjoy it, I really like it, and for 37 bucks, being able to get blue switches, which I don't think they're necessarily the MX switches, they're some sort of knockoff, but they have a really nice tactile feel, and with the bumper modification to them, they have a really great um, travel distance, and they're also really fun to play on. Like I said, this is probably my favorite surface to play on. I don't necessarily use it because of the ticky sound, which uh, picks up on the microphone, which is kind of unfortunate because I record videos all the time, so I prefer brown switches. But if I wasn't recording, I'd probably prefer this keyboard, or at least these switches, over, let's say, the brown switches. So it's a great surface to play on. Ultimately, though, the one big thing is a couple of the problems. The biggest one is the rollover. Um, issue right there and the return key being a little bit weird but ultimately it's still a pretty good keyboard and a pretty good deal at 37 bucks to get you into a mechanical keyboard that seems to be well built not only that it looks pretty professional as well to say it's professional keyboard though i wouldn't necessarily go that far anyhow though that's my opinions and that's my review here of the alula SI 2012 Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. Hopefully you found this informative. If you did, maybe leave that like on the way out. If you got some more questions for me, go ahead and leave them down there in the comment section below and I'll see if I can get it to you. Anyhow, if I've earned a subscription, then thank you so much for that. I'll see you next time, guys. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar out. Quickly now, quickly. We can do it. Rage Potion. Help me out, come on. Knock it down, knock it down. One more, one more. Yeah. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. What up, dude? What up, dude? You weren't expecting me. Woo, baby! Spin, baby, spin! Spin, baby, spin! Spin, baby, spin! Woo! <laughs> Ooh, you weren't expecting that one. <laughs> one million. There we go. Ha <laughs> ha!
<laughs> now we're talking. That's the sound of money if I ever heard it. Woo! Kind of got a weird ring to it. I'm liking it so far. Bye-bye! <laughs>